Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today we are going to continue our journey in learning the CC. I'm going to focus on some of the controls on the main interface, which will um, give you uh, a start on how to compose and learn how the CIS works. I'm inside AUM, so I'm going to use AUM as a host. And as you can see, I'm going to use Red Strike to produce sound generated from, uh, uh, from a MIDI event, of course, perspective from the CIS. Um, before I start, uh, I'd like to remind uh, viewers to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And for your uh, reference, I'm going to use an iPad, um, an Apple iPad 8th generation. So just in case you want to monitor performance and you have a question about hardware. So um, as I said, I have Red Strike here. I have connected it to the SIS and uh, let's open the SIS and uh, uh, let's maximize it to the window. So first thing I want to do is to start with an init sound. Let's go to factory and um, let's select that init sound like so. Next, I want to ensure that the trigger mode is set to external. It is set to external at the moment, but normally when you first run it, you will find it that it is set to note on, which means that um, if you um, like so have the keyboard below, you can click on a note, okay, and click play, it will um, trigger the sequencer and then you can stop clicking on the play note. If you have it as, an, as a toggle, you can see the um, play is already running, you press again on a key stop, you press again on a key, it starts again. Or you can have it as external, which means it will follow um, the host, which in this case is is AUM, so you can click on the play AUM and it will start. So remember that in case you're wondering why you don't uh, um, see it um, uh, triggering from AUM. Normally when you start it is on note on, therefore as you can see you have to press the note and hold and it will um, play as I release and let it go. Um, it means it stops or you can click on the play button to actually get it to play. Okay, so hopefully that um, it's um, <clears throat> understood. Now, as you know, um, the SIS has um, a large interface, so you can double click anywhere, anywhere, to, anywhere to zoom in and double click again to zoom out. That sometimes is not great when it comes to do a tutorial, so I'll do my best to minimize the amount of zoom in and zoom out. Okay, let's start from the very top. Um, and the first thing to say is these horizontal bars are sequencer, sequencer for the pitch, sequencer for the velocity, sequencer for the gate time, sequencer for the performance, and below you find sequencer also for the modulation. So I will try today to cover the pitch, velocity, gate time, and hopefully performance as well. Um, so let's start with the pitch at the top. You can you can see here you have steps one after the other, four steps here and a bar, another four step, etc. And these green bar at the top define the loop, which you can also change. Okay, so you click and hold and move left to right to change the length. In underneath each step, you step you find a note C, which is the root. Okay, the root is established here on the left hand side. You click on hold and you move up, you can change the root. And the root is a very, very important because uh, as you click and move up and down for each step and you change the pitch, it moves uh, within the scale of, uh, uh, it moves within the scale which is selected, in this case chromatic, starting from the root key which you selected here on the left hand side which means in this case start from C and it's chromatic. So as I click and move the pitch up, C sharp, D, D sharp, etc. But if I was, for example, to select something different like um, minor pentatonic, as I move the pitch up and down, it goes from C to D sharp, no C sharp, then it goes to F, G, etc. So it follows steps in the scale that you have selected, starting from the root that you have selected. Okay, so um, let's um, create um, uh, four steps like so. Okay, and then let's click play. 
As you can hear, there is no sound, and the reason is because there is no velocity associated with each of the pitch steps. So you need to go down here on the sequencer, and you can see the sequencer are aligned, so the first step on the pitch correspond to the uh, to the first step of the velocity that correspond to the first step of the gate time, which also correspond to the first step of the performance. So in that case, you can give a velocity to that first step for each of the bar, like so. Now, if I click play, you should hear some sound. Okay, perfect. Now, if um, you want to um, stop one of the steps to be changed, you can click underneath. You see that uh, red dot, which means you block it. You lock it so it will not change. And that's particularly useful as you do randomization later on, as I will explain. In terms of control up here on the left, you have copy, which you can use to copy what you have on the screen there, then you can make some changes, for example, and if you don't like it, you paste, you go back to the original one. And remember, it will copy only what it is contained within the loop, okay? Or you can use these controls here where you can move the steps to the right, to the left, up or down as well. Very, very useful. As well, what you can do, you can play forward, you can play backward. You can also play randomly, which is very interesting. Or you can play every two steps. And the amount of notes, of course, it will play, it depends on which step it will land. Or you can play every three steps or every four steps, so up to you. But let's uh, now set it f to play only on uh, forward mode. Now, if you move to the right hand side of that sequencer, you have three more uh, icons. The first one is to clear everything, to reset the sequencer. The second one is to randomize. And the third one is to mutate the randomization. As you click, it mutates. It doesn't completely randomize. It mutates what has been already randomized. But let's go back to uh, a reset. Oops. And um, let's zoom here again, and let's click Paste, which brings me back to where I was. Something else as well you can do in terms of entering steps, you can use the record mode here. So you click Record, and in this case, you have selected Live, which means as you click Play, and you press keyboards, uh, you press keys on the keyboard, so it will record the live and uh, the pitch corresponding to the keys you press on the keyboard. Or what you can do as well, depending on the location here of the step, you can go and click where it says live. You can go in step modes and then use your keyboard to do step recording. So and that's them quite nice. So for example, when you have very complicated parts, in this case, you can use the external keyboard and just press uh, key. So let's activate the external keyboard of uh, AUM, click, click, click. You can see it's moving the pitch to the next step as I click. So you can do nicely a uh, step recording. Now let's click paste again. So that is how the sequencer um, for the pitch works. Now let's move down to the velocity. Well, works very similar, similar control on the left hand side. But of course, instead of setting the pitch, you set uh, the velocity and therefore the intensity of the sound. So hopefully that is straightforward. Now let's um, move uh, um, further down, like so. Let's go to the gate time. Now the gate time is very interesting. Again, same controls up here, okay? Here underneath you have a multiplier, okay, which will enhance Sorry, will increase or decrease the duration of the timing for the gate. And the gate, as you know, is how long you press or keep open that gate. So you can say you want something very short, like a staccato, something very long, like uh, perhaps more like a legato. So you can, in this way, keep uh, the duration of the notes longer. So let's try. Let me show you now what happens if I use the multiplier and I go from one times four to exaggerate. So 
So as you can hear, the duration or how long the gate is kept open is multiplied by four. So let's bring that back to number one. Now let's move down here and let's talk about performance. Again, similar controllers on the left hand side, but the way the performance works is quite different. So let's start from the top here, associated for each of the step. Let's click on it. And this one is for the octave. So you can go up an octave, or you can go down an octave, or you can go up two octaves, or you can go down two octaves. So let's uh, try to go up an octave there, and we go up an, another octave there. Let's click play. Okay, so that uh, is how that works. Let's move to the second line now, and let's uh, choose step two and four. Let's click on that. And here's where you choose your uh, bend, and you can have different uh, um, setting for how you want the pitch bend to happen. So in this case, I wanted to go up slightly up, and in the last case, I wanted to do more like uh, up and down, like in these terms. It's almost like applying a sine wave modulation to the pitch. So let's see. Okay, so hopefully that is straightforward. Click and hold on the step. Okay, and um, yeah, and if you press properly on it, and you will reset that. Of course, you have to be right on the center as well. Okay, so okay, that's done. Let's uh, go to the net to the third row. Let's click on it. Here is where you can establish code. So, for example, you can say, all right, I'm going to have uh, minus X. So let's try. And on step number four, I'm going to have still a minus nine. So you can use that third row from performance to establish different chords which are played, which of course are chords played within the scale that you have selected on the pitch. Now let's move on to the next row. This is where you set the repetition and you can have different pattern. You can set the repetition uh, with the same note like so, or you can set the repetition to uh, go up in steps or repetition actually to go down in steps following the scale. So there are different combinations which makes it really, really nice. Of course, it works better when you don't have uh, um, any of uh, uh, the code selected. So uh, let's um, remove that code. Let's try again. And in this last case, in this last step, it sounds almost like a strummy of a guitar, doesn't it? Okay, the fourth row, um, so you click on it, and this is where you can randomize. So you can say randomize the pitch, the velocity, the trigger, the gate time, the octave, etc., etc. So let's say that I'm going to randomize pitch for the first step and also for the third step. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you found this uh, second part useful. So we explored how to use the pitch velocity gate time and performance sequencer, which is really nice. And we'll move in the next part to further increase our knowledge of the rest of the controls inside this fantastic MIDI sequencer. See you next time. Bye.